It's Saturday morning, January 2nd, 2021, up here in the modern comic book room of uh, Dr. Gratu Orloff. Um, in this room, I've got all the comics from like 1971, 72 till today. Um, down the hall, I've got all the comics from, you know, 60s, 50s, 40s, whatever, the older, Silver Age and back. So, <clears throat> thought I'd uh, share Saturday morning with you, since they don't run cartoons on Saturday morning anymore. Maybe we can uh, um, have some fun here. So, went to a comic shop yesterday and stocked up on, first of all, I stocked up on backing boards, because I ran out of those right before Christmas. <clears throat> so, they were having a sale, and they were... 25% off, so I got uh, 200 of them, which won't really make a dent, but at least it'll get me going for a while. And uh, basically, uh, woke up to find that uh, the stimulus, the $600 stimulus check, had hit. <clears throat> so I thought I could spend a little bit of money. They were having this huge sale at the store. I, it was probably not the wisest move because it uh, there were uh, wife wasn't too happy about it but at all so but let's take a look see what I got so basically they have the way they do it at this particular store <clears throat> Duncanville books they have comics that are priced classic vintage comics and that's the price and the price on there is the price you pay and they have another room with all the modern comics all filed and they're priced then they have a whole giant section where the comics are all five dollars and, and they put a little colored sticker on there that means it's a five dollar book and they have another room where they're all two dollar comics and they have a different color sticker they put on there to indicate it's a two dollar comic and then, then they have <clears throat> books that are priced that are 50% um, off. And then they have another group that's priced and they're 25% off. And that's just everyday thing. But the sale they're having was 25% off everything in the store except for the stuff that's already 50% or 25% off. And then this, the books that were $5 were half price, $2.50, which is about half the price of a new comic you'd get off the stands today. And then the two dollar books were all a dollar. So a dollar for a comic now in, in today's world is almost like they're just giving it to you. And there are golden age comics down there that are a dollar. So I got up and <clears throat> drove over there and, uh, and spent uh, a little bit too much money. But let's take a look at what I got. listening to player piano music here on the Gratu Orloff channel. Let's see. Let's uh, separate them. All right. So here's some comics that I paid $2.50 for um, that were $5.00. And hopefully I don't, I haven't replicated anything that I already own. Um, Metal Men, number 17. Let's get some more light. I don't like the lighting situation. Hold on. Let's see what light. Oh, shit. I don't think that light's plugged in. I just dropped some stuff. My ass is too fat and I knocked some things down. Shit. 
No damage. Apparent damage. Just some copies of an American flag and almost some Dennis the Menaces got knocked down. piano roll there. You can see that on the TV there. Hmm. Maybe I turn this TV on. I don't know, that'll prob probably just provide more glare on the uh, comic bags. But... A narrow walkway there to get by. So one of those challenges. All right, let's plug this phone back into the charger because it's a little low on electricity. Yes, yeah, so I just use a, one of these uh, iPhones made with Chinese slave labor. <clears throat> no, I'm not using a camera. Okay, so, where did I put that? What I was just looking at. Oh, oh okay. So, <clears throat> Middleman, number 17. Shoot. Maybe that'll help. Okay. Yeah, it's a little better. Um, I got uh, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. number 9. And number 10, which I need to put with my uh, Christmas covers for next year's Christmas show. If we're all still around then. Let's see, what else did I get? It's My Secret Life, number 33. It's a romance comic. But it has a special contest. Win two round trip tickets flying TWA to Disneyland. Or New York, plus many other great prizes. My Secret Life. So that goes. I'm alphabetizing them. I gotta go file these in the Silver Age room. From the Bronze Age, here's Monsters on the Prowl, number 29. Heaven help me, it's true. There is a monster at my window. Okay, put down the bronze age. Yeah, I got some of these great uh, Marvel horror comics that I didn't have. This is Uncanny Tales from the Grave, number five. Looks a little bit like the Black Widow there. Um, Vaulted Evil 19. I don't think I have this issue. Pretty sure I didn't. Don't. It's definitely not one I bought as a kid. I may have bought it since then and have, um, don't recollect it. Millie the Model, or the new Millie the Model. Love covers where they're listening to records or as you Young whippersnappers call them vinyls. How come you don't, how come you only play the records we don't like? It wears them out faster. Oh, that's silly blonde. Just a cool, look at that logo. Millie the model. Yeah, I thought I got some other metal men. The new hunted metal men, number 35. A 
this is a 12 cent comic so it goes in the other room here is um It's, it doesn't have a date stamp. It has one written in grease pencil. August 24th, it's a November issue. So it gives you an idea of how many months ahead comics were put on the stands from the cover date. This is number... Pardon me. 28. I love the Metal Men. And... Uh, wasn't sure if some of these I wasn't sure if I had them already so I you know for 250 I'm gonna um boy, those glasses make me look like a serial killer or something you know actually I think I have this issue 26 but um, we'll have to see another one, another one of those DC purple covers that used to be so sought after to the comic collectors of another generation. Metal Men number 23. Metal Men is a property that has not been uh, turned into an R-rated streaming show or uh, perverted by any modern people. It still remains of its time, untainted, unsullied, unperverted by the modern age. It has a purity, therefore, Metal Men number 22. Also for 250, this is well, it, it's kind of a good copy, but I can tell the staples loose at the bottom, uh, is separated at the bottom, but, you know, Metal Men number 19. It's still... <laughs> Sorry. You know how uh, that uh, Chinese virus is. Oh, let's see. I am really sleepy this morning. Big time. The wide, wacky world of Stanley and his monster. Help, there's a monster inside. Now this has been perverted by modern times because I understand they've revived Stanley and his monster and he's some kind of demon. You know, but Metal Men, no one's screwed it up yet. Okay. I just went through my Strange Tales the other day, and I'm pretty sure I didn't have this one. Number 166. One of the last issues of Strange Tales. That needs to be rebagged for sure. Feels like you're in an Old West saloon, doesn't it? Oh, the partner. Um, hold on. I'm trying to decipher something. Yes. This is from this issue of Devil Kids starring Hot Stuff. Is uh, I'm gonna have to send this off to CGC. Number 32, the reason, it's from the Paul McCartney Pedigree Collection. Can you see that, ladies and gentlemen? Paul McCartney, he, uh, Either that or it's just Paul McCarthy. But I think it's some kid writing Paul McCartney, and I think they, I think he left the E out of McCartney, uh, you know, right before the Y. Yeah. Paul McCartney's personal copy of Devil Kids. Just the beginning. What 
lies beneath may be the what if it really was 20th century fox station. what about the that the planet of the apes how about that one? this is the year 3955 AD the apes are building a war machine I'd never seen the uh, this incarnation of war is hell when they went to this logo which is I guess it was just for this one issue I mean uh, war is hell was an attempt by Marvel to imitate weird war at DC and, and they kept changing it throughout its run for a while they, was, they became a reprint title of Sergeant Fury reprinting stories from the 60s and, um, Maybe it was right after this issue they just went to Sergeant Fury reprints, but they were trying to do a weird. They even put we, the weirdest combat stories of all. So in other words, we're even weirder than Weird War. So this is Bronze Age. Wait a second, I put Millie the Model with Bronze Age. Oh, can't have that contamination. Let's see. I have the Silver Age. I don't want Silver Age tainted by the Bronze Age, or really it isn't the Bronze Age so much that taints the Silver Age, if they were put in the same boxes, it's the shit that comes after it, like in the 90s and stuff. Okay, oh more. This is a big haul, ladies and gentlemen. Why is this so thick? I think they put two books in this bag by accident. It's for lovers only. Number 86. There's two books in here. This is weird. I don't think they knew it. Okay, wow. So I got two books for two fifty. So that means that each one was a dollar twenty-five. This one is uh, for lovers only, number eighty-seven. But it's weird in that it almost looks like you need to put your glasses on. It's printed just a little bit, bit offset. You see, look at the guy's chin. That's not your television reception. This is fucking great. There's more and more people out there in the community that are collecting romance comics, and you can see why. I mean, uh, even though this is Charlton, it's really uh, quite nice, in fact. In fact, the artwork almost approaches Marvel art in this. Who is this artist? Not like Charlton's going to tell you an artist's name. Well, am I insane? Yeah. Cool. Well, that's really cool. I got a free comic. I thought it was, it felt thick in, in the, like, I thought maybe it's a giant size issue, but no, it was actually too, I don't know. They're just probably trying to get rid of, they probably just figured someone's stupid enough to buy a romance comic. We'll just throw two in there and get them out of the store. Oh. Okay, also for $2.50. Oh man. Can't read. Number 13. In my defense, it is hard to read there. It's it's kind of like the colors are off. But it's an issue of Hawkman. Oh, the beautiful cover. Um, number, whatever, whatever, I think 13. The colossal combat that Hawkman had to lose to save his life. But isn't that cool? But that's really cool, those two people there. I think I love that. You think I'm insane, don't you?
Boy, am I tired. On the, on the sixth, they're each, each, um, I guess they're, they're gonna let each, they're gonna have like 24 hours of, how's it gonna work? They're, they said it's going to be like 24 hours of testimony, and the president wants as many people as possible to show up in Washington, D.C. I don't know, it's going to be something unlike anything I've ever seen. Here's a, here's a copy of Dell's Ghost Stories, number 22. That's one of their better covers. Sometimes Dell just had line art, but here they have a painted cover that almost rivals a gold key cover. And this is, uh, this is so much. Here's the Flash Gordon from King Comics, number, uh, nine. Here's a new comic I got. It's from about a month ago, but at the time I didn't have I didn't have the money and I went and I no, I don't think I've been back. I don't know. For some reason I wasn't able to get the final issue of this Neil Adams uh, Fantastic Four thing. And uh, I love the Fantastic Four and I love Neil Adams and didn't know he was still working in the regular field of comics, so I uh, picked that up. So when I finally get around to reading it, I won't be missing the last chapter. Um, my Secret Romance, number... Damn, I think that's 11. That's a cool cover. 15 cents, so it goes with the... Uh, Silver Age. I'll be over in that room later today. You can watch me file these if you're really bored. Okay. This, yeah, this was in the $2 bin. But it's so I paid a dollar for it. And it, it, it this is just really cool. I'm going to open it up. And also, it's in my light. And it was a $2 bin. I mean, it's, it's really a great store. High-power binoculars. See up to 18 miles. I love, I've always loved this wrist radio ad. This may not, uh, it's not Golden Age, it's 12 cents, but it really looks like Golden Age. It's okay. Glasses, I threw them over here. That's why they start disappearing, I just throw them places. Published by Super Comics. Wow, that's weird. It doesn't even give a year. You probably could tell the year from the baseball ad if you're a baseball lover. Look at that. From the. I would guess this is real early 60s, right after they went. Comics went to 12 cents. That is my guess because it still has a very 50s look about it broadcasting from the hidden bunker below castle gratu you're listening to radio gratu 106.9 fm wfun excellent stuff there's oh, the bag got no i lose things very quickly here. In the bunker.
we're um, looking at a house in Virginia. I was going to go look at it, uh, get on a plane and go look at it. But now the current thought is my wife's going to go look at it. Uh, she was going to go early this week, but now she's going to wait until after the 6th to see what's going on. Um, because the 6th is, I mean, really, this is going to be one of the most important, uh, this is a very historical week. So I, I guess maybe Thursday, Friday, she'll get on a plane and go look at it. We're concerned about a few things, like a, it's a really cool floor in the basement. It was so 50s looking with this cool 50s pattern, but we're kind of concerned it might be as best as it probably is. But whether or not it has damage to it, and you know, I don't need to be breathing in any more of that. I've breathed in enough of that. It will work in a school built in the 50s and probably growing up. I don't know. I've never smoked, but I don't know why is my voice so gravelly. I don't know. I'm a hypochondriac, ladies and gentlemen. I already had this issue. I'm almost positive, but this may be better than my, I don't know. But, uh, you know, for a dollar, I'm going to pick up the Inferior 5, number 6. Yeah, Inferior 5. Little Dot, Dot Land. You see, Little Dot's thumbprint is uh, Dot's. And Little Lotta is a normal human being. See, Little Dot is an Anunnaki. human angel hybrid. No, those are Nephilim. I'm knocking something else. Those are what, space aliens? I think so. Oh, more. There's still more. There's a lot to see, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay. Um, I remember... Kazar, also known as Kazar, whatever you want to call him. I remember his comic starting, and I bought the first issue off the rack. I remember right where I was. I was in the PX, uh, Fort Sam Houston, San Antonio. But uh, I remember it was a 20 cent, you know, and he had his knife up like this, and his saber tooth tiger and everything. And, but I guess they tried to start a Kazar comic. Kazar. I always call him Kazar. I can't call him Kazar. Kazar. I guess they tried to start one earlier on, because this is issue two, and it was, you know, this was 250. And uh, it's it's reprints, it looks like, from Daredevil. And this is uh, reprints of when he's with Spider Man, which I think last summer I bought the original issue of The Amazing Spider Man with that. But anyway, that's a, re a reprint title of Kazar. And then, um, when I was like in third grade, they started a Human Torch comic, and they would reprint a Human Torch story from early issues of Strange Tales, uh, from the early 60s, and then they'd reprint a Golden Age Human Torch story. And uh, I bought, I thought, the whole run of that, but I don't think I got issue eight. I don't remember owning this. And this bag is all jibbled, so I'll uh, go ahead and extricate it, throw away the bag, but maybe keep the board, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that this has been sitting there for in their rack for many years, unsold. I guess that's the purpose of these sales, is to clear out space. I, it's unfortunate, they've, like, they've cleared out a section and put CGC slabbed comics and... There was a guy looking through them. It's like, why? Why would you want... See, I can open this up and look at it. You can't do that when you buy those. All right, so here's what we're talking about. So it, it's an early... Se this is a comic from, I would say, 74. Is that about right? Is it still 20 cents? No, it's 25 cents. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, November 75. So it's reprinting Strange Tales 108. Yeah, real early Strange Tales issue. So, you know, but if you don't have that issue, it's cool. 
I never had any of these guys. I never even saw one in person, I don't think. This is the, the ad for Robert Bell. See, Robert Bell looks like Thor, and he's got bees all over his costume. Robert Bell was a comic book mail-order dealer, um, sold old comics. And I never got anything from him, but he was um, he's the guy that invented the comic bag. Um, I thought, well, maybe... Oh yeah, it does have, yeah, I was thinking it, yeah, okay. So then it has a golden age. Look at that fucking thing. God damn it. Something like that might appear on January 6th in Washington, you know? The unhuman. Yeah, this was the human torch back in the 40s. And, uh, you know... Depending on the origin that you read of Fantastic Four, you know, Johnny Storm will say, when he first bursts into flames, he says, I'm like that old-time comic book hero, the Human Torch. I don't... So, uh, so it made a reference that that comic actually existed in their world. But, um, I don't know. And then later they decided that he was a real character that existed in that world and, and I guess made in the comics too. I don't know what I'm talking about. I need to shut up. Okay. Go, go, an animal. Let's open up Go, go, an animal, shall we? You assume that the girl is Go-Go and the guy is Animal, but it could be the opposite way. Oh, on the back you've got a poster of Harper's Bazaar. And I think they were the ones that did that song, Feeling Groovy. Pretty sure. It's obviously an Archie ripoff from think tower who put this out oh and they've got the even the serendipity singers and i don't remember what they sang it was some i mean it's just it's like a exact archie ripoff um why the guy is named animal i don't think they'd name a girl animal yes indeed she's a little bit of a twiggy type are you ready for dating? You're not ready to date until you know how to talk to a boy. Take this quiz. Score yourself. You'll know whether the time is right for you. Number one, you and some other girls are talking to a boy you really like. You want him to notice you above all the other girls. Would you A, join in a conversation when somebody asks you something? B, try to start a new topic of conversation on the subject you think would interest him. What is your answer? It's a mystery. Right. That's go go an animal. I will put that with the uh, soul coach. Oh! The uh, Incredible Hulk 137. But this issue left off the words incredible. I guess it wouldn't fit in with the art and the fact that they put this word balloon up here just because <laughs> to make things fit. They had to leave Incredible off that issue. So he's just the Hulk for one issue. 137. Oh yeah, this is the Kazar I remember. I don't think I had issue two. I got issue one. They kept some characters that Marvel just kept trying and trying to get people to accept them and never quite worked. This is uh, the revival of Journey into Mystery. The original Journey into Mystery morphed into Thor. So they had this old title. They started it over as a reprint of um, 
early Silver Age, late Atomic Age, monsters, giant monster type stories. Isn't that cool? for the head of the most vicious crime syndicate ever conceived. Shelly Weathers. Also, um, I'm almost positive when I showed you this, god damn it, the, um, Tales of Suspense the other day that I didn't have this issue. Now, this issue is not in any great condition, but for $2.50 to pick up a reading copy is okay with me. Cleopatra Jones with Bernie Casey and music by Joe Simon and Billy Jackson. I mean, uh, yeah, damn straight. Two dollars fifty cents. Ah, oh, memories. Old comic books, ice cold Dr. Pepper, and great music blasting from the speakers of Gratu Radio. Amazing. Guess what, man? Bad edit there. What else do I have? I didn't think I had this issue, but it was for, it was two fifty. And um, this is this is reprints from early Thor comics. So this is Silver Age. This is Bronze Age. Bronze Age for uh, yeah, this would have been two fifty. You know, uh, new comics like my I keep justifying it to myself are four dollars or five dollars. So uh, I shouldn't have to justify two fifty is a good price. But bought a few too many. Okay, I'm putting bronze in the wrong place, getting distracted here. Don't think I have this issue of Conan the Barbarian. Number 25. Also, 250. Okay. Um, I hope I don't already have this. Creatures on the Loose 25. He's, from, he's a warrior from Lost Lemuria. I know I don't have this issue of Vaulted Evil. And uh, this is just a cool Captain America reprint. Just amazing, so. Very early uh, Bronze Age. Um, early Bronze Age, they put the art in a box, and I love that. I, I don't know why. It's just something cool about it. I guess just because of. The age I was when I was seeing those on the stand, uh, maybe that's it. Because I can't explain it otherwise. Oh, yeah. Um, then I got another new comic. And this was... Uh, I, I had a poster here somewhere. I think I saw a poster for this Batman comic a while back, and I picked up a couple. Co I, they were right here. Um, I don't know what this is. I better open it. The cover is so spectacular that I just said I've got to get it. Because it would look good on a comic book wall in an ultimate. But I guess it's an alternate cover. I don't know. But if it's a variant cover, why was this not chosen as the real cover? Because to me, there's a real cover and everything else is... Uh, but I, I paid 15 fucking dollars for it. Yeah, because the sale didn't apply to new comics. 
and I feel embarrassed about it. But look at this artwork. I mean, this is really good. I mean, if all artwork in these new comics was like this, I, I well, I, I don't know how I'd afford it. It's uh, Batman, Catwoman. I've seen promotional posters for this. Is it number one? Book one. It does say black label, which means to me that it's probably got lots of shots of people's asses. Um, or maybe someone says bastard or something, I don't know, because they've got to prove to the 50-year-olds that, that buy these comics that they're, they're not buying little kid stuff. Let's take a look and see, because I might have gotten fooled, artwork inside may be shitty. Uh, well, it's, well, they got Batman making out with Catwoman on the first page, let's see, uh, I'm your host, Dr. Grotuor, along what is, playing some of the greatest music ever recorded. yeah, they really, uh, how the okay, they draw her, uh, well, artwork's pretty good, but, um, what's new, pussy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, they draw her still with the short hair. Um, I don't know what variation of Catwoman is being used in comics now. Yeah, it's this uh, Catwoman with the short hair. Um, yeah, it's lots of uh, page layouts built around uh, her body. Lots of full page art. Ah, hopefully it'll be a good read. I don't know what what did I get ripped off? What is the going rate for this particular variant cover? I have no fucking idea. I don't follow the market. I just this is, I got it. Okay, there's some other stuff I was gonna show you. Where, oh, then I got some magazines. I bought this magazine in second grade. This might be a slight upgrade in quality. I don't know. Basically, it was $5, so it was $2.50. So I had to get it just because I love the cover. And so now I've got two, maybe three copies of it. I'm going to open it up and see. Probably it has the comic book removed, and that's why it was in the $5 bin. I, I don't know. Let's see if it's in here doesn't say anything about it now it's still in there it's got the original see it has a reprint of uh, 50s uh, of 50s it's in there it's for 250 and it's got the original supplement it was really hard to remove the comic books you'd have to buy a second copy and then you'd, it's really hard to, to remove it if you wanted to have it separate Okay, so that's that. I already have this. 250 I had to get it. Just because I'm going to put it in a magazine rack out here in the hall. And, you know, because I love this fucking cover. Planet of the Apes and Mad are two of uh, my favorite things in the world. So I've always loved that cover. Uh, this fall 1970 issue, I'm not sure if I own. I probably do. But... At this point, I was just, anything. At 250, it was like it was being given away, so I just had to keep. It. And then this, I need to open and see if the original poster's in it. And I've got, I bought a, a po I never, I, the poster that's on my wall on the other side of this door with the Vampirella. I have this poster, and uh, but I bought it from someone on eBay. I didn't remove it from an actual vintage uh, 60s magazine. I would never do that, but um, I just found someone that had already done it, and I uh, got it, and I think I laminated it, or maybe it came laminated, I don't remember, but just opening this up and see if the poster's in it. Now, 
No, the poster's been removed. I, I don't know if I own this. God damn, that is so amazing. Ugh. Just words fill me. I wasn't expecting uh, that to be in there, so I'm not disappointed. Screen Throws Illustrated. Two fifty. Superman has jumped from comics to television. I got a, some issues of Crazy. Crazy was good for like the first year. I just because oh these were these were a dollar. I got issue 13, which I don't think I have. I'm almost positive. I don't remember this. I don't think I have this issue. 14. 16, and I can add this to my Christmas collection. I think I already have it though. But this one. No, this one. I want to open this up and see if I remember remember it. But a dollar is, you know, when it was new, it was 50 cents. So I'm paying a dollar. It's not a horrible. Marie Severin art on the back. That's one of the things. I, he, she's one of my favorite artists. So. See, Marie Severin. I'm pretty sure I don't own this. I would remember that. Marie Severin doing pulp art. Wow. Yeah, it's a... Yeah, I do not remember the parody of Buck Rogers. I would remember that. How did an issue of Crazy go by without me buying it? Because I was buying it faithfully then. It may have been during a move. Yeah, for the first year or so, they did the history of Moose Kind, and they were, um, um, this is, um, How to Survive Your Education, it looks like this is also, yeah, um, Marie Severin art. Oh, they do, they do a parody of Mandingo. Man Thingo. <laughs> at least someone at Marvel realized what Man Thing sounds like to the average person. Um, because. Uh, and when you add giant size to it, you know, when Marvel put out a comic called Giant Size Man Thing, and, and uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it sounds a little uh, perverse. Um, I'm pretty sure I have this issue, but it was a dollar. I'm not going to leave that behind for a dollar. This was also a dollar. This issue of the Rook was a dollar. Not sure if I have it or not, but I'm just not going to risk it and drive. Oh, okay, that's how it's different. See, that means it's a two-dollar comic. So yesterday they were a dollar. The green means that they're fifty per. No. The green? No. The green means green means that they're five dollars. So this was two fifty. So I got a bunch of Eries and and. Uh, creepies that I wasn't sure if I had. I'm going to go through a box over here and figure out which, if I do or not. This is Eerie 50 from August of 73. Now, Creepy and Eerie started both as um, horror 
anthology comics like the old DC, but then in the 70s, Erie started to have weird superhero stories. And so it would be a bunch of uh, supernatural heroes that would appear in each issue. So it became more of a, more of that kind of thing. I remember this cover so, so well on the newsstand and I don't think I own it, so I had to get it. 250, are you kidding with this art? It's number 42, October 72. Here's 52. Um, yeah, this is when they had the mummy, the werewolf, and Dax the warrior were the heroes, or you know, they just kind of characters that were recurred. Yeah, see, they they were calling them horror adventure stars that were kind of continued from issue to issue, so that kept you coming back. Here's 54. Um, I'm going to open up this one just for grins um, because I don't know, maybe some of you have never seen the inside of an old Warren magazine. Okay. I remember this ad. They were they bought this um, Italian or French uh, comic called Dracula and translated it into English, and they were selling it. The first thing I love about um, these Warren magazines were the ads in the back so you had all these great poster ad, I mean you get masks the giant Frankenstein poster from Jack Davis um, all these radio shows and probably every record on here you can get just listen to on YouTube now um, order all kinds of books um, the, the Aurora model kits, you could order them. Um, Ant Farms, Frankenstein masks, it's just like, I would stare at these ads and stare at them for hours. Barnabas Collins novels, um, um, this was always a little questionable here. Um, some, some fellow some science fiction writer that Forrest J. Ackerman knew had a, a cause, I don't know, they, they didn't call it cosplay back then, but she, she, she would go to conventions and dress like Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, and Barbara, Vampirella especially, and, uh, but she was really young, she was like 14, and, and she won all these costume contests. Forrest J. Ackerman put out a whole book, whole magazine about her, and it's like, man, that's a little questionable. Everybody's kind of, I don't know that people collect that. It's uh, people, uh, it's one of those things people try to forget. It's like, why did you, this creepy old man put up this magazine filled with pictures of, the, of a girl dressed like Vampirella? This is the model kit. Um, for Vampirella. The way they drew it, it looks like she doesn't have any pants on. I mean, they're there, but you you really can't see it. Uh, let me show you what that model kit damn, really looks like. From what you just saw, <clears throat> that was an attempt to stand, but it didn't work. Okay. Okay, whoa. We're at the carnival here on the Gratu Orloff uh, channel. Okay. There. You see that, ladies and gentlemen? Back behind Zatanna and behind the Wonder Woman is uh, the model kit. <laughs> Doesn't exactly look like what you just saw. Anyway, let's get back to looking at Erie. Anything else?
was cool. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the big Star Trek lives. That was the big everyone. Star Trek was coming back, and then the 1973 Warren Awards. Esteban Moroto, Best Art of the Year, 1973. Let's see all the people. Richard Corbin was like one of my favorites. Oh, he won two awards. Best Artist Writer of the Year, 73, and Special, all, a special Award for All-Around Excellence. They have back issues you can get for high prices. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like, you know, now. See, that's an example of Richard Corbin's art. I just love the airbrush look he, he gives to his stuff. Now, what they were promoting on the cover, special color comic starring the Spirit, they took Will Eisner's Spirit comic and recolored it. I think, yeah, Richard Corbin did the coloring. So he took this beautiful Will Eisner art and then added his his uh, airbrush 3D look to it and uh, and it just uh, pretty incredible um, let's say you know because it was a kind of a what would you say this is aimed at teenagers uh, they have to put a little bit of nudity in every issue to, to show you that you're getting something that's more adult. Oh my goodness, so that's Erie number 54. What else did I get? Erie 62. And this is from uh, January 75. Erie 63, February 75. I think I have this. I'm pretty sure I do. Almost positive. But I, I like getting duplicates to put in a magazine rack. And then have the other ones in the box. Here's an earlier issue of Erie number 16 before they started bringing in the adventure heroes and it was just uh, that stuff. Creepy number 38. And then this is from the spring of 71. This was, um, I think I have several copies of this, including my childhood copy. This is the first Mad that I ever bought with the permission of my mother. This is a song against the Chinese government. There's a government in exile of these, uh, I think the, the guy that would be the Chinese president is the soccer star. And uh, they're, um, they want to take, they want to, uh, rise up and take down that evil government and they want to show that the Chinese people really want that but they're um, they put out these songs like take down the CCP the Chinese Communist government so, this is the song I thought it was though this is more of a rap thing I don't like it there's another one that they play on Steve Bannon's war room that's that's a, that's better um, Oh, this still has the portraits in it. That's what I was looking at. You know, they have, Al these are, you can frame them. You have Alfred Newman as Napoleon. A um, little bit of a tear at the top. Okay, you got him as Genghis Khan. <laughs> there he is as Tojo. King Tut, Alfred <laughs> Newman, Pancho Newman, I forgot that one. Um, there he is, Teddy Roosevelt, brilliant stuff. Hitler, 
I've got that, or I did have it in another room. Uh, <laughs> that's good if you have like a Western room. Benjamin Franklin. Uh, wow. Oh, and the Red Baron. Forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's nothing like this. Well, that may be the whole haul from uh, yesterday. Um, well, I bought this box. These new boxes are weird. Because the way they have this, it's just diff different design than what I'm used to, where um, both sides were like this, and the ones I used to buy. I don't know. So, I guess I need to go work in the other room. putting these uh, Silver Age comics in this box and then I can go file them. And the backing boards. Where's the lid? There it is. Well, I guess I'll be back with you uh, shortly. Thank you for joining us with episode 71. Be seeing you.